Jesus preached that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Huge crowds followed him. There are many miracles happening. People were getting healed from diseases and sicknesses. They were getting fed. But all of a sudden, Jesus switches his ministry approach. The things he used to do earlier are seen barely, if seen at all. All of a sudden, he starts teaching the people in parables that not too many people understood. Why? So, join us this summer, July 26 through 29, as we unravel the reasons of why this ministry shift happened, as we open up the secrets of the parables. Jesus spoke clearly to the people. Practical living through picturesque teaching. In Matthew chapter 13, he talks about five parables, culminating in the last two which talk about the value of the kingdom of God. An example he uses is a pearl of great value and how a man sold everything he had to attain it. In the parable of the lost sheep, Jesus chooses a bold statement. The argument he had was something that they deal with in everyday life and they were silenced. It was such a strong argument because they knew, the crowd knew, they would go after the one lost sheep. They would leave everything behind, their whole flock, to go get that one sheep. But in Jesus' case, it was different. What he was after was something a lot more precious than all the sheep combined. Jesus was here to save the soul of a man. A lot can be told through a story. In Luke 15, we see a loving father who had two sons, younger, the rebellious, and the older, the righteous. The younger was so sick of home. In his rebellion, he went away into a far country. The older stayed home in self-righteousness and hated every moment of it. As God's children, we're trusted with His possessions that He has given us. He gives us gifts. In this specific parable, they are called the talents. But how do we properly manage those talents in order to give Him the ultimate glory, give Him the most glory we can? That's what this parable is about. Is how do we properly manage those things when God comes back in return and demands to give Him what He has given us? This is a wall of unforgiveness. Forgiveness is sweet, and forgiveness is freedom. As Dr. MacArthur says, we are the most like Jesus when we forgive. In the parable of the unforgiving servant by Jesus, we see the implications of what it means not to forgive and the dangers that lie behind it. In Luke 18, Jesus tells a story of two men going up to the temple to pray. We'll look at the prayers and what they trusted in. In the end, we'll see that the Pharisee went from glory to dust and the tax collector from dust to glory. 